Welcome, everybody, to this edition of O365A. Uh, on tonight's show, um, or wherever you're in the world, maybe it's good day, good night, we're going to cover uh, Microsoft Ignite 2022 uh, Teams announcements. So let's dive right into it. There's there's quite a few. Habib, why don't you kick, kick us off? Yeah, thanks, Kurt. So uh, first things off is, you know, the Office 365 uh, application is now going to be Rebranded and renamed as the Microsoft 365 app, and that's going to be on the uh, three applications. So Office Web uh, or Microsoft 365 Web now, uh, desktop application and mobile app. So you're going to see uh, that change uh, coming relatively soon. In the in the web app, uh, you'll see the banner there now uh, stating that it's going to be changing soon. Uh, next is some updates to Microsoft Loop. So the, they're going to be coming out with a, um, a loop application um, to be able to, you know, collaborate, you know, within the, the loop app itself. They're going to be adding some additional functionality as well. So currently today you can use loop inside of Teams and Outlook, um, or desktop and web. So they're adding it into Microsoft Word. So you're going to be able to add the loop components in there. Uh, additionally, you'd be able to copy loop comp existing loop components and paste them in whiteboard and they'll be able to sync uh, across the different applications that you have loop uh, running for that particular one. Um, obviously, because they're all saved in your OneDrive, that's how it does the syncing in between the applications. Um, there's going to be uh, a new loop component for Q&A uh, capabilities, and then they're providing some additional um, security enhancements for loop uh, with regards to sensitivity labels. So being able to apply a sensitivity label to a, a loop component that you're working on. And then also, you know, admins can apply DLP to loop components. So if somebody's entering in some sort of um, you know, sensitive information, uh, it'll trigger the warning to say like, hey, you're, you're entering um, stuff that you shouldn't be uh, adding in here. Uh, and then <clears throat> because it's in OneDrive, then the retention policies apply that way. Um, next is going to be, you know, uh, Outlook is adding um, uh, office hours and location. So uh, working hours and location, which I think is going to be formally called Microsoft Places, uh, so that it's really just a calendar view um, of your team that can see sort of where you're going to be at. So this is adding into the hybrid work capabilities uh, or continuing to add into the hybrid work. Um, so at a schedule, people can see sort of where you're going to be uh, on a particular day, whether in the office or at home. Uh, meeting recaps, be able to see, you know, all the recaps in the meeting invite, um, the recording if it's available, transcription, everything else will be there. Uh, again, adding into the, um, you know, the hybrid and, you know, the working hours, depending on sort of where you're living, is they're going to be adding the capability to schedule a video recording or schedule a message, sorry. Um, for, you know, when you're sending that within Teams. We have that today in Outlook, so they're going to be enhancing that uh, as well. Uh, and then lastly, um, so as we know, you know, Microsoft uh, last year or this past year has moved from the classic stream uh, into a stream on SharePoint and OneDrive. So initially the, you know, the first rev of the stream on SharePoint was strictly just a viewer and, you know, um, you know, putting the files within OneDrive and SharePoint to easily access and share. So then, uh, you know, became sort of just a placeholder to view sort of what was shared with me. Now they're adding in some of the enhanced functionalities that the classic stream had. So being able to, you know, record your webcam, record your screen, uh, include, you know, some additional functionality like inking and background blur, et cetera. Uh, there still isn't any uh, governance capabilities within that. So you still can't restrict who can do what functionality, like you had some in the classic stream. So we're hoping, I'm hoping that they're going to be adding some of that in the future. Uh, and then, you know, when, when you do have the recording, it's going to be able to, you know, auto-generate auto uh, uh, transcriptions, chapters, uh, you know, do intelligent searches, and then uh, timeline markers within the actual video itself. So after, after it, uh, you know, uh, transposes the video, then you'll be able to see all that. So then uh, that's it that I got from the Microsoft 365 side of things. So, Michael, I know you got some licensing updates uh, that you want to share. Yeah, continuing the theme of uh, change, name changing. Uh, so Microsoft Endpoint Manager is being renamed uh, back to Microsoft Intune. 
so that, that was an interesting uh, change of events, kind of going back to the original name. Uh, as have mentioned, Office being renamed to Microsoft 365, so the office.com redirecting to Microsoft 365.com starting November. So there's going to be some planning around, around that and then the, the apps kind of going into January. On the licensing front, there's been a, a lot of changes uh, announced at Ignite or a lot of new things coming at Ignite, a lot of changes that just recently happened. So maybe a, a crash course on Teams licensing will kind of put this together. So we have uh, Microsoft Teams Core, which is the Teams feature uh, that we have under most of the Microsoft 365 and Office 365 licensing. We have the newly announced Microsoft Teams Premium. This includes, uh, this is actually going to preview in December and gonna go uh, rolling out in, into February, 2023. But these are the new features that are mostly meeting centric. So uh, a lot of the stuff was, uh, some of the stuff from the advanced communication SKU, that's going away. Uh, so what we're gonna see is like meeting templates, custom branding, uh, we're going to see watermarks and, and uh, sensitivity labels for meetings. We're going to see advanced webinars and virtual appointments, uh, some intelligence for our meeting recaps. So we're seeing like all these new features for, for meetings kind of coming under this, this premium SKU. I think for the most part, the, the licensing will be based on the organizer that books the meeting that has these features. Uh, but we'll get more information once it comes into preview. Uh, kind of rounding out the licensing, of course, everyone's you know, aware of the, the Microsoft 365 audio conferencing. That's just the ability to get a dial-in bridge on your meetings. Uh, that's included in your E5s. So there's a free version of this and most uh, locate, uh, most available to most tenants uh, with uh, dial-out. Uh, I know in, in North America, it's, uh, the license is called Microsoft Teams audio conferencing with dial-out to, to US and Canada, and that's free. Uh, so that that's an add-on you have to put on to, you know, anything that's not an E5. We have our, our Teams phone standard, which is also included in E5 add-on for others. And this will give us some of the voice features that you know Dino's talking about and, and some of the other things that we talked about phone, uh, Teams being your, your office phone. We also have the rebranded Teams phone resource account, which is the licensing, which also is free. They use to sign to auto tents and call queues resource accounts to build those advanced call flows on, on Teams phone. We have a new renamed license. The common area phone license has been renamed to Teams standard, uh, or sorry, Teams shared device license. This will be used for common area devices, uh, kind of some of those hot desking scenarios, as well as panels uh, and, and, and some of the scenarios that we'll talk about for around meeting rooms. We have our Teams room basic, which is free licensing for those Microsoft Teams rooms, those purpose-built meeting spaces to, to join that Teams experience. Uh, I don't think I was, you will see many organizations deploying the Teams Room basic license. It is free, of course, but you have a limit of up to 25 in a tenant. And there is a lot of features that are disabled in the basic version. So things like uh, dual screen, uh, you know, the ability. And we, we had a podcast talking about some of these features, so I won't go too deep. But I, don't, I think basic will be used to kind of for testing. Uh, but the actual the Microsoft Teams Room Pro license this is the license that organizations should be budgeting around, planning around. This is the replacement for the Teams Room Premium and Standard licensing. It includes the, the management portal. It includes, you know, the, the ability to, to you know, have all the features, some of the features that Kurt will be talking about, uh, the intelligence in the meetings. So, and any new features that come to the Microsoft Teams Rooms will be in that, that license. So get onto that license as soon as possible. And then just around on the calling side, we obviously have the Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams calling plan. So if you were going to use Microsoft as your telco, we have options around domestic, international, and also consumption. So pay as you go for outbound, and it includes inbound. So a lot of changes here, a lot of things that we've talked about over over the you know quite a few episodes. But just to round out the licensing announcements, and of course we have communication credits for the prepaid minutes when you go over your pooling, or if you're dealing with toll free. But that I know that was a crash course on licensing, but maybe I'll pull uh, pass it over to Dino to talk some about some of the, the fun features that you'll get with licensing. Yeah, thanks, Michael. And, and to keep in line with the theme of the uh, products being renamed, the first up for me is uh, Teams Phone Mobile, which was the artist formerly known as Operator Connect Mobile. And it, it's funny because it didn't even launch as a product. And the name changed before the product even 
um, came to fruition. So um, I personally liked Operator Connect Mobile. I thought it made a lot of sense because it went in line with Operator Connect. So when you think about Operator Connect Mobile or now Teams Phone Mobile, that's an, an enhancement to operators that are already providing Operator Connect, which allows you to bring your mobile into the, the picture now. So now I can bring my own device and uh, by I can get that to focus and um, as an operator offer, you know, if I had an organization of say 5,000 users, I'd have to have 10,000 DIDs, possibly uh, potentially uh, 5,000 for the team's users or their DIDs and then another manage another 5,000 phones. Well, now the value prop is that I can with operate with uh, team's phone mobile is that I can pair that down to 5,000 DIDs and that did is shared uh, vis-a-vis the operator and, and teams. Um, in a single location, so that's kind of cool. So, um, Teams Phone Mobile is is the name of the feature. Um, single number reach, uh, which is great. Um, Rogers is the first in Canada to offer this. Um, that was announced at Ignite. And Telia is the other carrier um, abroad. Uh, more carriers are going to be offering this um, for sure. So I expect every single operator connect uh, certified vendor today to probably offer this. Um, um, well, actually, I should say that if they're if they're a carrier dealing in mo- mobility, they likely will. So um, look for more to come. And then the other thing that's asked a lot about this is BYOD. So if I already have a number on my personal phone and like I go to work for a company that wants to implement this, how can that work? How can they coexist? And uh, there's been some talk of that, and Microsoft's announced that it's, that's that feature will be roadmapped. I'm aware that, that there's already testing going on to, to make sure that that could work. So then you could continue to have a private number separate from your organization, which you know uh, would, would save you from having to carry two phones. Um, next up is the SIP gateway, not renamed, still called SIP gateway, but um, uh, the, the exciting thing about SIP gateway is we now have support for popular ATAs. And this is something that's been asked for, for uh, quite a while now. So uh, first up, we had you know support for uh, legacy style phones, you know the VDXs, three pip phones, or, and even um, Cisco my, uh, and other style devices. Now we have the ATAs, so popular analog uh, telephone adapters. So um, Cisco is being supported out of the gate. The ATA 191 and 192 Poly OBs are the 300 and 302s, and um, audio codes. So lots of uh, support for audio codes here, the entire MP lineup. So 112s all the way up um, to their, I think the 18, 118 and the 124. So 24 port density gate uh, uh, ATAs are being supported. So that's great because there's a lot of organizations that had an analog uh, piece to, to deal with and now they, they've got a, uh, some support there over the SIP gateway. Um, they also announced overhead paging will be supported. So this is this comes up a lot as well uh, with with customers when you're planning these migrations away from some of the legacy platforms, and um, often they have uh, overhead paging in place. And um, Algo is the only uh, vendor that was announced for support, but I expect um, more vendors will come out uh, with su- support on the SIP gateway. And then lastly. Um, I'm talking about the branch office survivability. So this is the Teams SBA. And so this will be like Teams SBA uh, version two. Um, So just a quick recap, the SBA is what allowed you to maintain um, like a basically connectivity to be able to make and receive a phone call in the event your uh, uh, internet went down or you had issues with your SBA. Um, The SBA, uh, sorry, your SBC, the SBA would kind of pretend it's the cloud and allow um, certain functionality to work, assuming you architected your um, voice setup such that you could still make, you know, your, your PSTN uh, provider was still available. So they're enhancing that to allow you to um, do some chat uh, and see call history and also use your dial pad to make uh, PSTN calls. You didn't um, have that capability before. So when you're in offline mode, you have these these new capabilities, which is kind of neat. And then lastly, um, if you have users connected uh, within your network to the same survival branch appliance and network, in the event of an outage, you can actually um, 
uh, route the call between the users via the PSTN. So if I'm in the same building as somebody, I could just literally dial them up, you know, the call, you can call that user and it'll use the PSTN to call them, uh, assuming that both users are lit up for enterprise voice and have a DID. Um, yeah, so some uh, it, some pretty cool features there. And uh, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Kurt. All right. Thanks, Dino. Um, three, uh, three announcements on my radar were uh, starting with mesh avatars for Teams. So if you're not familiar, a mesh avatar allows you to participate in a Microsoft Teams meeting without turning your camera on uh, instead of uh, a video feed of your yourself you have the ability to present an avatar, which is like a 3D animated representation of yourself. Um, so I've, I've gone through this process of, of creating one. There's a Microsoft Teams app called Avatar that you can use to uh, go through and basically customize how you want to represent yourself graphically. And um, it's, it's interesting, you, you have a lot of flexibility and choice in how you show up in Teams meetings. And, um, uh, yeah, you can essentially use that uh, and choose from hundreds of different of options to represent yourself in the meeting rather than using your, your video camera. Um, it is available in the standard Teams meeting experience, but the key here is right now it's only available for private preview customers, so not to be confused with public preview. Uh, so uh, private preview, you need to sign up for it. Um, we'll put a link in the, uh, the associated blog post for this this session and um, basically you sign your organization up, you become part of the, the, the program and then you can turn turn this feature on. So yeah, th this one should be interesting. There's um, uh, people seem to lo love this feature or hate it. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how it lands. Next up is IntelliFrame. So that's, uh, it's a, uh, new video experience where you have a, a capable camera in uh, Teams Rooms camera and it uses artificial intelligence to um, detect the people in the room and give them their own video feed. So they each, all the in-room participants show up in the video gallery as if they're remote. So I think this is part of Microsoft's um, initiative to bridge the gap between in-room and remote participants making it the same, like everybody's sort of in the same, uh, the same connected space. Um, it also ha uses the AI for active speaker tracking too. So it'll be available in the first quarter of 2023 for Teams rooms equipped with those intelligent cameras. And lastly, some pretty exciting news on uh, the partnership front with Cisco. So uh, for the longest time, Cisco and Microsoft have sort of had their own uh, stack when it, come, when it comes to devices, each supporting their own platform. No big surprise there. Um, and the pain there, of course, was to get those two, Cisco and Teams, to talk. You always had to go through interop, which is always a bit of a messy experience. So the exciting news is um, they announced at uh, Ignite that Microsoft has a new partnership with Cisco. And Cisco is going to become a certified uh, vendor for Microsoft Teams devices, or I should say partner, not vendor. Um, so initially, they'll support six meeting devices in three perif peripherals, uh, things like headsets and webcams. And the exciting part of this is the Cisco meeting devices, uh, they'll actually natively run the Microsoft Teams Rooms software. So they'll be able to directly join a Microsoft Teams meeting um and, and host a meeting so that's uh that's pretty exciting and i think that's it for me that was a a whirlwind tour of all the ignite announcements including michael's awesome two-minute uh, recap of licensing <laughs> i've never seen that done before <laughs> that's great so if you guys don't have anything more we'll uh close it out there and look forward to uh seeing everybody in the next session thanks Thanks.